quarter. We promote Mexico as often as we can. Our podcast and our website is choosemexicotoretire.com. We developed this podcast to educate people about Mexico. To this end, we are interviewing American and Canadian retirees, a.k.a. expats or expatriates, from all the major retirement destinations throughout Mexico. Some of these interviewees are completely retired, while others have developed businesses to keep them occupied. Send us your questions or concerns. We will answer you personally or on a later podcast. Good morning, good afternoon. Uh, that music sounds more like something befitting some Hollywood movie premiere. Well, this is the premiere of our podcast, Choose Mexico to Retire, a series of interviews. Our first guest is Mr. Alvin Starkman of Oaxaca by way of Toronto. Don't worry about the, uh, taking notes. We will have show notes on our website after the podcast. The website is choosemexicotoretire.com. Our, our guest, Alvin Starkman, uh, retired to Oaxaca about 10 years ago from Toronto. But retirement for Alvin is a little different than for most expatriates. No golf or tennis, no fishing or sailing, no bridge club or any, uh, any other club. And he's not an artist like so many Americans and Canadians living in Mexico. In fact, you have to wonder what retirement could possibly, possibly be like for him. What do you say about that, Alvin? Well, first of all, thanks a lot for inviting me to this podcast, George. Um, and in answer to your question, of course I'm retired, but retirement for different people takes on different forms. From the way you pose your question, it might appear that if we don't do any of the things you listed, then we must be bumps on a log. Actually, <laughs> uh, my wife and I started out doing what people who want to, ret to retire generally do. We met with our financial advisor, gave him our pre-retirement income, expenses, assets, and liabilities, and then a proposed budget for living in Oaxaca and asked him if we could do it. And he said yes. So we bought a piece of land, built a house on it, and moved to Oaxaca, having no idea what we would do to occupy our time, and not even knowing or considering if there were any other expatriates living in Oaxaca. I simply wanted to stop practicing law, and my wife was prepared to give up her psychotherapy practice in favor of just doing that, moving to Oaxaca. Well, what, what did you do when you arrived in Oaxaca with no expatriate friends and no plans to join a golf or tennis club or anything like that? Well, we ended up learning that there's a very vibrant expat community here with apparently the third largest English language library in all Mexico. But that was never a draw and has never been a significant part of our lives here. When we moved here, we already had a circle of friends in the city, native Oaxacans. You see, we'd been vacationing in Oaxaca for over a dozen years before we moved. Uh, we'd come down two or three times a year. And over that time, we developed a pretty good series of social networks. We already had friends, compadres, our doctors, dentists, a lawyer, and a notary. So the transition was easy, and we never felt the need or desire to become part of an expat community, as wonderful as life apparently is for those Americans and Canadians who hang out daily with other English speakers. Okay, so what about the expat community? Well, that's it for Alvin, but you can hear more from him uh, if you go to our podcast website, uh, He there's at least Oh, maybe 20 more minutes of Alvin speaking about uh, Oaxaca. And he is an expert uh, there, so he's worth listening to. He's worth clicking the mouse. The website URL will be in the description below the video. I hope you enjoyed uh, what you heard. Thank you.